What's going on guys? In today's video we are going to be reviewing my new four-wheeler and that is this 2019 Can-Am Outlander XMR 1000. So for those of you that watched my last video you saw that we picked up this machine and we're kind of doing a little bit of riding with it and kind of testing it out and uh, since I've got it I've put about 100 miles on it so got a little bit broken in kind of still figuring out what it likes and what it doesn't like. I mean this is the 1000 model, so it has 91 horsepower. It's a lot of machine, and it's still more than I am even capable of using right now. It's just is something that's gonna take a lot more practice and get more used to. Like, I pretty much my whole life have used the two-wheel drive quads. I've never used something that was four-wheel drive with this much power, this much weight, and just a ton of capability. So in today's video, I'm going to be kind of going over all the features of this machine, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. We're going to be completely unbiased. I do like Can-Ams, but I am not above realizing that they do have some flaws. So we're going to be going over all that today. And hopefully by the end of this video, if any of you are on the fence about buying one, this will kind of help, uh, help figure out if you do want to buy one or if you don't want to buy one. So stick around. So to start with, we're going to go over some features of this machine. Like I said, it is the XMR edition, which is Can-Am's mud line pretty much. And it is the 1000. So it does have a slightly longer frame than you would see on their 850 models. And it's also longer than the Renegades. I want to say it's about a foot longer. You can see since it is the 1000, it's got this uh, two up frame. So it's got this back foot rest here and that adds a little bit of length to it. So being the XMR edition, you get the relocated radiator, which I like so much. I have never had one of the, a relocated radiator on one of my machines before, but I have wanted one on my side-by-side. -side, it does not have one, and I've ran into so many issues with that thing. If you start getting into some nice swampy areas and you get through some thick mud and you're picking up grass up into your grill, that thing corks off super fast and then you're overheating. I've ran so many overheating issues with that thing to the point where it even threw it into limp mode. And that's something that, I mean, we threw this thing through some heavy swamps and I've not had it overheat once. Not to mention being up here, it's way easier to clean than if it was tucked behind this grill here where you basically can't get to whatsoever. So this is something if you're wanting to get a machine where you're gonna be doing a lot of heavy mudding, you absolutely will want to go with the XMR or at least a model with a radiator relocate because this can make or break your day and make you have to completely stop. Now, obviously this machine comes with a winch. It's a nice 3,500 pound winch. It's uh, a worn winch that Can-Am kind of throws their name on. So it says Can-Am worn on it, but it's an incredible winch. Uh, I've always loved worn winches. I've got one on my side-by-side. -side. It's 4,500 pound one. Never had an issue with it. It's such a good winch. I mean, it'll pull for days. Use this one a crap ton already, like you've seen in the previous videos, and no problems with it. It'll pull you out of anywhere you need to go. Now, this machine comes from the factory with 30-inch ITP cryptid tires. They're pretty aggressive. I mean, they're not nearly what you're going to find on some of the older Renegades. I do believe the newer Renegades have gone to the Cryptids as well, but I know some of the older ones had almost like a Super ADV Assassinator type tire and it's super aggressive. These ones are very aggressive, but they're not to the point where you can't still like cruise down a normal trail. You're not just limited to like swamps. So they're, they're definitely rougher riding, but not to the point where it's unusable and they do really well in the swamps. Not as well as, like I was saying, an assassinator type tire. They're, those are definitely better. They got bigger paddles. And it's probably something I will look into upgrading later since I do plan to use this machine mostly for mud riding. But for now, these are definitely good and it's a great tire. And I'm really glad that Can-Am went with these as a factory tire because they just work really well. This machine does come with Fox QS3 shocks on all four corners. They're, I think they got like three positions that are adjustable with a little twisty tab thing there. And then you can obviously adjust the preload and everything. I haven't messed with around with it a whole lot. I will say that this machine is super stiff. Um, I know it's designed that way. It's, it's, it's just how it's gotta be. Like to kind of compare it, I've ridden some of the Grizzlies and their suspension is super soft. Like if 
you're just wanting to cruise a grizzly is great i mean they'll wobble a lot and everything and it just soaks up bumps really well however those ones the grizzlies do bottom out pretty badly and i found that i was having a hard time when i rode my brother's grizzly having a hard time keeping up with his renegade just because his renegade it's stiffer it, it's not you're not dealing with the rebound and everything and just the constant like wanting to try to buck you off and everything and like i said this has got so many so much adjustability that you can get it running pretty well and in the swamps the suspension is just great i mean it it does really well you're not like having to deal with it squatting and diving too much or anything it, it just does really well these are very good shocks and I'm, I'm very happy with them however like i said if you're looking for a trail cruising machine it's not going to be probably what you're looking for it definitely is a little rougher there and if you're just looking for something to go like 20 miles 20 30 miles an hour down a trail that's got lots of bumps on it uh, you're probably going to be disappointed if you've come from like a yamaha or probably a honda now like i was saying just overall sideways this is a very large machine um, I'm six foot three. This seat here comes up about to my hip. It's quite a bit off the ground. Uh, we had it on a trailer next to my brother's Grizzly, and it's probably a good, I don't know, four to six inches taller. It's quite a bit longer. Just everything about it is, it's a very large machine. I don't know that I've ever seen a four wheeler that is this large. Uh, the Renegade, like I was saying, is it's about the same height, but it's quite a bit shorter. And as far as Hondas or Yamahas or Polaris goes, they're all quite a bit smaller. This is just a big, large machine. And as such, that's another thing you got to kind of worry about because it is over a thousand pounds. And being this heavy and this large and everything, yeah, I mean, it's it can get you into some places. But once you do get stuck, you're really stuck. And... I can't even pick up the back end on this thing. It's so heavy. So you're definitely gonna be relying on that winch. So that's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to kind of go by yourself places. Uh, I would probably think twice about it. There's been quite a few times where I've been stuck and especially in swamps like that, there ain't really nowhere to winch to. So you're kind of needing to have another person. And it's not like you can kind of pick up your back end and slide it to the side or whatever to try to get yourself free. When this thing gets stuck, it gets really stuck. Now, something I really do like about Can-Ams, I'm not sure how long they've had this feature, but as far as the power steering goes, their power steering is great. On some of those older Yamahas I rode, it was, you had the power steering and it was just on. Like there was no different uh, settings you could have it on. And I didn't like it because when you got to high speeds, it was so responsive that I was like, it, it made me a little uncomfortable. Like. I felt like you could jerk it a little bit too bad and you'd be pretty easy to roll. This one will actively adjust for your speeds and everything. And it'll get like more resistant the faster you're going. So it, it just feels more comfortable and everything. Also, it has nice throttle modes. So you can put it like in a farm mode or sport mode or just regular. And that adjusts how responsive your throttle is. So if you're going over a ton of bumps and stuff or you're worried you're going to be jerky, it, it, you don't really get that with this. It's it's just very smooth and it's, for being a thousand cc machine, it's pretty forgiving, more than you would think. Now something where I think Can-Am absolutely messed up is with their four wheel drive system. So here you got your selector for uh, four wheel drive and two wheel drive. It works perfectly fine. There's There's nothing at all wrong with that. However, I don't like that up until 2021, they never offered lockers on these things. It was always an automatic locker, their Visco lock system. They didn't offer the Visco 4 lock until 2021, and even then you had to get like a specific trim level to even be able to get the Visco 4 lock. Now, I have not had too many issues with it yet. I mean, they say that, oh, it'll lock in and everything. My brother's Renegade, I know it was having some issues. It wouldn't Basically, once you got into a mud hole, it would wait a little bit before all four tires would really lock in. And by then, it's usually kind of too late because you're just sitting there digging a hole for yourself. I do like, that's something I liked about some of the Yamahas I've ridden before. Like, you lock it in, it's there. And you know it's there. You don't have to worry about, oh, I hope the module or whatever kicks in all four tires and I'm not just screwed. So that's something that Can-Am should have done a long time ago. I know they have on their newer models. So if that's something that's super important to you, get a 2021 or newer 
And if you get a 2021, like I said, you got to make sure you got, I think it's the yellow and black uh, trim model that actually has the Visco 4 lock. And anything else is not going to have that. So it still works good though. It's just a little bit of a gripe of mine that I wish they would have done a long time ago. Now my next biggest gripe for this thing has got to be storage space. It's absolutely ridiculous. Any four-wheeler I've ever ridden before seems like they've got some type of storage space up here right up on front of the seat where it'll like flip up and you can have all of your put a phone or something in there. I mean on this one they don't even have that and it's absolutely ridiculous to me because on the side of here there is a 12 volt uh, like a charging port where you can put like a adapter or whatever in there to charge your phone or wh whatever you have but once you do that there's nowhere to put it i mean there isn't even a handlebar bag this is just like a cushion here there's nowhere whatsoever to have any storage which on the renegades you're really screwed because there's nothing anywhere on the quad at least with the outlanders if you come here to the back you do get this i mean it's probably uh i don't know two and a half three gallon storage container so that helps you out a little bit. I think it's supposed to be watertight. Um, you do have this rubber gasket here. I've noticed, have noticed some moisture getting in mine. Then you got a place up here for your toolkit. So that's nice. It comes with all that. But I just feel like they could have done something a little better with storage space. Obviously, I've got this tote here on the back. But when I go mudding and everything, I don't like having that on there. And this is not something that just comes with any of the models either. It uh, It's something that you have to get as an add-on as part of the two-up package. So I definitely think they could have done better with the storage and hopefully they will do that with later models. As far as I know, even the 2022s don't have any better storage, which in my opinion is ridiculous. When you're spending $16,000 for a machine, you should get some decent storage because most people or a lot of people that use these things don't just go for a day trip. They'd like to have some place to kind of throw something. Now fortunately, this two-up setup is very easy to take apart. You just pull this lever here. And then it just pops right out. I haven't done it a whole lot, so I'm not as good with this as I could be. But So that just pops right out. Then you just lift up the tote tub and those two little screws for the, for the link system. That's... Uh, BRP's patented system for their containers. Switch it right off, set it off there. Then you got your whole rack ready to go. And it's super easy. I do really like that system they've got. You can put a ton of different accessories on there and it works really, really well. Now my machine did come with this extra little box here. So once you take off the two up seat, you can put this box in place, which does give you some nice kind of watertight storage, which I do like. But uh, I'm not sure if that is a completely factory option or if this is another add-on, but basically it fits in there and you got your little link system right there. This just kind of goes in place. And then you twist it, there you go. And you got some nice waterproof storage that just has these little clips on the side. At least that gives you something. That's usually what I've been riding with when I go out. That way I got something that I actually know is waterproof and then I'll put other stuff in that back cargo compartment that I showed you guys. That way I got something. I just don't like having all that big bulky stuff back here. So that way I have a place to put my feet on uh, the rear rack. Uh, another thing on that topic is the racks. If you're getting the XMR edition, you're not gonna get a front rack and you pretty much lose all storage space on the front. Uh, the guy I bought this from, he, that was one of the main reasons he didn't like it is because he wouldn't go caribou hunting and he only had space on the back rack and when you're hauling out a caribou that just doesn't do you very much good so that's something to think about but if you're looking at this machine anyway probably not your first priority is hunting you're probably looking for a mud machine and so racks aren't going to be a huge deal but at least this one you you got a good decent sized back rack here it's another thing on the renegades you don't even get that that's an add-on that you got to get and it's kind of a pain. So that's on the whole Outlander versus Renegade topic. And that's kind of why I went with this one. It was still a little bit where I could use it for things other than mudding, but it also should do a pretty good job at mudding. 
Now, something else I kind of don't care for is the footwells on this machine. I do really like the pegs, so they grip your boots really nicely and kind of keep your position. However, these footwells, I absolutely hate. And this is not Can-Am's fault. You can order the self-clearing footwells with the machine, which if I were to order one, that is definitely something that I would get because these do not clear out, especially when you get that super thick swampy stuff up in there. It just, it packs up in your footwell and it's terrible. Um, some people may not want those because these ones that are on it already are a little better. Like if you're not gonna be mudding a lot, I mean, you're not gonna have to worry about your feet falling through them or whatever. But if you're gonna be doing a ton of mudding, I would recommend getting the self-clearing footwells because it's going to help you out a lot when you're not having to reach down and dig out big chunks of mud out of your way to actually keep your feet in any type of position. Something else I'll mention is this does have, so you got your snorkels there and everything. Uh, it's not obviously as crazy as the Renegade is where it's got the big rhino horn up over the top. However, you can get an add-on with these that has an additional snorkel that kind of comes up right behind here. Turns up, that's something I may do later. For now, this works really well. I haven't even come close to getting it that deep. Something kind of strange that I just thought was kind of worth pointing out is on the Outlanders, you only get one rear brake. On this left-hand side, you can see there's all the stuff to mount it, but it's not there. And on the right-hand side, there's all your braking stuff. Now, I thought this was pretty weird when I first saw it. I was like, oh, I'm missing a brake. I wonder what happened. And I started looking into it more, and that's just how they are from the factory. For some reason, they only gave the Outlanders one rear brake. The uh, Renegades get two rear ones, which is kind of weird to me. They say that the engine braking makes up for that, which I think it does. The engine braking is actually really good on these things. Like, you let off that throttle and it really slows you down, which is nice for going down steep hills and whatnot. I mean, it works really well. Uh, it's not really a design fault. I haven't noticed it pulling to either side when like you go to brake. So I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. Um, just think it's kind of weird. And if you guys buy one and you happen to see that, you'll know why it's not there. Something that I know everybody obviously always wants to talk about is reliability. And I can already hear the Honda and the Yamaha guys in the background chim chiming in with, no, nobody can touch our reliability. And okay, that's fine. Yes, I know a lot of people that have got thousands of miles on their Yamahas or whatever, but you gotta keep in mind that this machine specifically has over twice the amount of power that most of those Yamahas and Hondas are running. I think they're typically in like the 40s or something with their single cylinder engines. With these V-twins, I mean, yeah, you're looking at 90 horsepower. I think the 2022s are even more than that, but it's, it's a lot more power and surprisingly, you get really, really good reliability. These 1000 engines are amazing. I've got one like you've seen in my side-by-side, -side. that thing has got over 4,000 miles on it. I have never touched a thing on that engine. I've actually only blown one belt personally and the previous owner said that he only blew one as well. And I haven't really been nice to that thing either. I mean, it's, I've used it for what it was made for. I've taken care of it, but I've never had to touch a thing on the engine. I've been very impressed with it. I've seen tons of people in the Facebook groups I'm on for these machines that have easily got 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, 15,000 miles. There's one guy in there that's even got 50,000 miles and can am talking about giving him a new machine just because he's, it's so impressive. Like 50,000 miles out of one of these machines, I think you're gonna find, be hard pressed to find a Yamaha or a Honda that'll even keep up with that. So if you're worried about reliability, don't let that scare you. These things are insane. They are very reliable, obviously. A lot of it comes down to how well you treat the machine. If you abuse it, it's probably not going to last very long. But that goes for anything. I don't care what you use. If you just beat the crap out of something, it's probably not going to work really well. But anyway, like I was saying, if reliability is trying to turn you off or whatever because you think, oh, it's higher horsepower, it's a mud machine, no. These things are very solid and you're not going to really go wrong as far as reliability goes. So yeah, if you guys are kind of just sitting on the fence on... If you want to buy one of these things or maybe buy something else, I would kind of break it down this way for you. If you're looking for an all out mud machine that'll take you pretty much anywhere you could ever dream of wanting to go, one of these Outlanders or even a Renegade XMR is going to be really hard to beat. 
They're just really solid machines overall. The fit and finish of them is really good. I like the coatings and everything that K&M puts on all their stuff. Like I was saying, that side-by-side's got over 4,000 miles on it now, and I don't even have any chipping on the suspension pieces, which to me is really good. I know some of the other brands like Polaris that I've seen, their coatings on their suspension start just seems like flaking off in sheets and then you get rust all over the place. That's something I've not experienced with K&M and I really like that. So if you're not just looking for an all out mud machine and you want something that'll do a little better, just weekend and cruising down the trails, maybe going hunting with or something, something that you want to be a little easier on yourself with, I would honestly steer away from these. You're gonna be pretty disappointed. They do suck down gas. Like I said, they're super rough on the trails and you're probably gonna be a little bit disappointed with it. My personal recommendation would be to go for something like a Yamaha Grizzly 700. I've ridden a couple of those machines. They're very good, very good suspension, very good on gas, and they're just all around comfortable machines and still very capable. I have been honestly surprised at some of the stuff those things can get through, and it's really not bad at all. So yeah, if you guys have got any other questions about other features I may have missed on this machine, uh, just go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you, especially as I get more seat time on this thing. Unfortunately, winter is coming, so I'll probably try to do a little bit of testing with it in the snow, but probably won't get a whole lot done with it. So yeah, until uh, the next video, we will catch you guys later.